Now to developing news in Waterbury, the U.S. Department of Justice announced charges against 16 gang members in the city. As alleged in the indictment and in related prosecutions, members of the 960 gang not only murdered and attempted to murder rival gang members, but also shot and maimed unintended victims whose lives have been forever changed by their reckless behavior, said U.S. Attorney Boyle. This long-term investigation and prosecution of these 16 defendants represent the commitment to help dismantle violent groups and prosecute those whose drug trafficking and relentless acts of gun violence destroy the communities where they operate. The indictment of 16 members of the 960 gang in Waterbury is a product of the tireless work and collaboration of numerous law enforcement agencies. Especially given the recent escalation of gun violence and gang activity, this effort will undoubtedly make the Waterbury community a safer and better place in which to live. The FBI, ATF, and Waterbury Police are actively investigating multiple Waterbury-based groups whose members are involved in narcotics trafficking, murder and other acts of violence. Allegedly, the 960 gang marked Long Hill Road or the Hill and the Berkeley Heights housing complex, an arrangement of brick buildings for low-income apartments that sits at the corner of Long Hill Road and Berkeley Avenue as their territory. Allegedly, 960 has been feuding with a gang called ATM, addicted to money, which is based in a Brooklyn neighborhood, dubbed the Zoo. I'm addicted to this money, it's what I'm all about. I put that thing to a nigga, feel watch his mouth. We got beams on the 40s, what you talking about? Slow it down, it's 14 in my clock, I let you hold a pound. For my mom, Duke, set the pin, I swear she hold it down. They also feud with the Avenue Boys, who operate from Walnut Avenue, where a corner bodega sits, to High Street, which is lined with vacant and rundown buildings. Among the violent acts committed by the 960 gang, the indictment alleges that, on October 31, 2017, Justin Cabrera, a.k.a. J.U., attempted to murder his rivals. Upon the act, Justin shot and wounded rival gang member, J.B. The next month, on November 22, 2017, McDaniel, a.k.a. Young Gap, 21, along with 960 gang member, Love, a.k.a. Goon, 20, were in a Wendy's parking lot on Wilkett Avenue when they found themselves parked face-to-face -face with rival ATM members, those members were Antonio Santos and Clarence Lewis, a.k.a. Clee Day. An argument broke out between the two groups, with one side disrespecting the other. The gunman belonging to the 960 gang, believed to be Goon, and whose logo is a ski mask integrated with a pistol, opened fire into the Volvo. The bullet slammed into Clee Day, and Santos peeled off. He may have been hit as well, because shortly after the car sped from the parking lot, it crashed. Sadly, both ATM members died. When investigators checked the car, they found that Clee Day was in possession of a 9mm handgun. Evidence showed that the same gun was used in a shooting just a year before, in which bullets ripped through a home where Goon was staying on Wood Street. Young Gap is a 960 gang rapper whose lyrics doesn't fall far from his real life activities. And when I get it, I'ma give it so his mother's straight. Goon while an hour here, he caught another chick. Could've got shot a couple times and that's without a doubt. And I just pray if I get hit that it go in and out. Sick thoughts, when you dealing with this beef shit. Everybody think they really with this street shit. But these niggas never seen how the streets get. Another day, another shooting, so I keep shit. Paranoid, so I gotta go to sleep with the fuck. Glock 26, and it got a steep click. Everybody big 960. But when it's time to drill a op, who gon' ride with me? A handful of niggas, so you know we really gang. The guns you see on Snapchat, yeah, they really bang. Like this wasn't enough, he was also charged with a drive-by shooting on Porter Street a month prior. Four men in a Pontiac pulled up outside the project's ATM territory and sent at least 17 bullets flying towards congregators. Jay Butler was hit in the shoulder and leg while he was outside Porter Street projects. Justin, J.U., was charged in this shooting as we covered briefly. When young Gap was 16, he was convicted of first-degree robbery and sentenced to three years in prison. On December 29, 2017, Young Gap attempted to murder an individual believed to be related to a rival gang, which resulted in gunshot wounds to J.S. January 2, 2018, Brian B's Cruz, an ATM member, and Young Gap got into an argument inside the Waterbury Superior Court building. After the argument, Cruz was near 300 Grand Street walking when an SUV containing gunmen pulled up and started throwing shots at him. 
He started running to the direction of State Street near an employee entrance for the courthouse, where he collapsed. Fogel, an ATM member, was present at the shooting. Allegedly, he was walking with Cruz near the courthouse after that argument when the two encountered another 960 member who took a shot at Fogel, so he returned fire, sending nine bullets from a Glock pistol in his direction. After the exchange of gunfire, Fogel jumped a fence, running through several properties until he escaped the area. Police eventually tied him to the crime through a witness. Young Gap was charged, but was later cleared of the crimes, after surveillance footage indicated he was not involved. Thirteen spent shells were found along Grand and State Streets from three different guns. The attack occurred in the morning, while people were going about their business in the area. Fogel was already convicted of robbery in 2014 and was already in jail for violating probation by the time he spoke with police. He was sentenced to 12 years for his role in the shooting. Five years probation on the come out. Following the courthouse shooting, police raided a condo that's across from an elementary school on Thomaston Avenue. They say 960 was using and seized 250 grams of hash, about 350 grams of marijuana, scales and a money counter. September 2, 2018. A witness to the killing told police that there was a car crash followed by the sound of gunshots on Catherine Street at about 1 p.m., Two males, one who police later identified as Javen White, were dressed in black standing near a chain-link fence talking, when a black Nissan with dark-tinted windows slammed into a car near them. White pulled out the grip and started blasting away at the Nissan as it reversed. The Nissan crashed into a truck. At some point, Jesus Bryant, the driver, was hit in the back of the head as he stood near the car, which sped off when the gunfire erupted. Police would later find the bullet-riddled car covered with a tarp behind a home on Camp Street. Bryant was on life support for days after the broad day shooting before his family considered pulling the plug. Allegedly, Javen White was an Avenue boy, and Jesus Bryant was a part of the 960 gang. White was 15 when he murdered the 20-year-old Bryant, who was a well-liked individual. He was tried as an adult at 17 and sentenced to 32 years in prison. When police asked him why he did what he did with that 9 milli, he had no answer. The 960s believed that Hector Morales, the alleged leader of the Avenue, boys, had ordered Bryant's killing. September 21, 2018. Day Quan Sinistera, aka Quan, attempted to murder individuals associated with Hector Morales by shooting at an occupied residence on Lounsbury Street in Waterbury. Same day, 960 gang members, Ezra Alves, a.k.a. E.J., J. Vaughn McKnight, a.k.a. Sav, Quan and maybe one other person, drove to an apartment complex on Scott Road. They drew their guns and showered the apartment after they believed they saw Morales inside. This was Morales's girlfriend's residence. She was not injured, despite the hail of bullets. The bullets hit two cars and two homes. On October 6, 2018, E.J., Julian Scott, a.k.a. Ju Sav, Quan, and Jermaine, attempted to murder individuals believed to be members of a rival gang, which resulted in gunshot wounds to an individual who was an innocent bystander. Less than a week later, the 960 members were at a recording studio in North Main Street, rapping and getting lit, before deciding to spin on the ops. Allegedly, one of the big homies, Gabriel Pulliam, a.k.a. G. Quan, Ju Sav, Jermaine, another big homie, Lederic Jones, a.k.a. Lexus, and three juveniles, jumped in a black minivan and a stolen Hyundai. The two-car caravan made its way to Walnut Avenue. Once they reached there, they spotted some rival gang members. Both cars pulled over. The 960 gang was still looking to retaliate for the murder of Jesus Bryant, who was killed just a block away on Catherine Street. This was the opportunity for them. Avenue Boys leader Hector Morales was on their radar. One suspected 960 member pulled a hood over his head, while another covered his face behind a mask, then they moved down the block, emerged from shadows, and opened fire on people on the street. Francois Guzman, 30, was shot in the head, while her friend Darlene Mazin, 54, was hit in the stomach by a bullet that hit her spine, leaving her confined to a wheelchair. Unfortunately, Guzman died. Afterward, the gang drove to a Southington McDonald's where they ate in the parking lot, flashed wads of cash for their cell phone cameras, and mocked their rivals by playing, Take Care Eyed Through the Avenue, a rap song blatantly disrespecting Avenue boys. A certified nursing assistant who was described as a loving, caring mother, Guzman left twin boys behind, along with her two other children. Her nor her friend were intended targets. 
Though the gang did not get their man that day, and a murder had already taken, that didn't deter 960 from returning to spin the block. Weeks later, they would get the drop on Hector. They shot him while he was on the street corner near Walnut Avenue, but he survived. November 2, 2018. Quan and two 960 gang affiliates chased a teenager into Bertie's restaurant on North Main Street. Quan dragged the teen out of the front door as he assaulted him in the head. The teenage boy was able to slip out of his sweater and run back inside the restaurant. Police said surveillance footage shows that when the restaurant owner intervened and pushed the teen's three pursuers from his shop, another teen ran up and socked him in the eye. The shop's owner locked the door soon after, and the assailants drove off in a car. On November 18, 2018, EJ, Ju Sav and Quan was in a stolen Audi Q5. They rolled up to the intersection of Porter and Bank Street and let off shots at people who were near the market. A 17-year-old was hit in the face by the multiple shots that were fired, while the 20-year-old was hit in the leg. Both were expected to recover though, which they did. Detectives found the Audi they suspect was used in a drive-by on Wood Street just days prior. Quan was apprehended on Walnut Street at an apartment later the same day. They found a gun and also placed him at the shooting. In mid to late October of 2018, the 960s allegedly shot an innocent 25-year-old woman instead of their intended target. The woman was hanging with friends outside of the same apartment building about 9 p.m., her back to the road, then the shots rang out. Everyone began running. As she tried to avoid the bullets and stay with the pact, she realized she must have been shot because she couldn't move. A bullet hit her backside, nicked her lower bowels and fractured her pelvis. She crawled to a nearby apartment where another woman used a towel to plug the blood leaking from her hip. Allegedly, the intended target was testifying against a gang member during a trial. Allegedly, she was a snitch, but the shots wound up hitting a different woman instead. September, 2019. Allegedly ATM gang member Frankie De Jesus, 22, had been arguing with someone over drugs on Hadded Road and had threatened him with a gun. The person either denied selling Frankie the drugs or didn't give him consignment, it was some dispute, but it was said that the resident was playing both sides. Allegedly, the resident was hanging around with guys from Long Hill Road, 960 Territory. De Jesus jumped in the car with Brian Cruz, who was on probation in connection with a federal drug conviction, according to police and court records. Cruz was the man who was shot running into the employee entrance at the courthouse in January, 2018. Cruz drove his Acura to Hadded Road where the resident was at. Allegedly, De Jesus dropped the car's tinted back window and let bullets fly from his 45. Two young children were inside the building at the time, and at least one of the shots slammed into the ceiling of a child's bedroom, according to police. There were no reported injuries from the gunfire. Police found Cruz at his mother's apartment on North Elm Street. They seized more than 200 bags of heroin, along with the Acura during his arrest. De Jesus was arrested and held on $500,000 bail. October 7, 2020. Around 6.42 p.m., officers responded to the area of Walnut Avenue for the report of a victim struck by gunfire. That victim, Luis Robert Vasquez. Upon arrival, officers seen a 2020 Kia with heavy front-end damage. It was due to collision with a parked car and a fire hydrant. Vasquez had a gunshot wound to the torso and other injuries to the head. A paramedic confirmed his death at the scene. Police also noticed that the car, which deployed its airbags upon impact, had bullet holes. A witness told police he was hanging on Walnut Street when the incident initially started. Vasquez pulled into the driveway and got into an argument with Jacob Morales, because Morales kept shooting his vehicle with paintballs. The argument escalated, and they got the one on. Vasquez was getting the better of Morales in the fight, so he asked for a gun. One person refused, saying he grew up with both of them, but the witness told police Hector Morales handed Jacob Morales a gun from his waistband. Allegedly, as Vasquez fled in his car, Jacob fired at him, ultimately killing him. Police said the witness identified Hector Morales, Avenue Boy's gang leader, while looking through a photo array of suspects for another crime. July, 2018. Authorities alleged that 960 gang member, Justin Cabrera aka J.U., shot and killed 22-year-old Cason Langhorn. Police responded to a parking lot on Chase Avenue around 7.15 p.m. that day after a report of gunfire and someone shot. The suspect was reported to have fled the scene in a dark SUV. Langhorn was later identified as the victim killed. He had bullet wounds to the torso and upper body. 
the 960 gang, were charged with multiple counts of assault with a dangerous weapon, attempted murder aiding and abetting an assault with a dangerous weapon, and attempted murder, all in violation of the VCAR statute. The assault offense carries a maximum term of imprisonment of 20 years, and the attempted murder offenses carry a maximum term of imprisonment of 10 years. These defendants are also charged with using and discharging a firearm during and in relation to a crime of violence, an offense that carries a mandatory consecutive sentence of at least 10 years. Some of these members, and other members who were not indicted for violent crimes, were charged with conspiring to distribute narcotics, including heroin and fentanyl. If convicted on this count they face a mandatory minimum term of imprisonment of 5 years, and a maximum term of imprisonment of 40 years, the charges are only allegations, and each defendant is presumed innocent unless and until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Thanks for watching.